Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, today, we're going to be looking at a few random Marvel movies from the 2000s that I have accumulated over time. Uh, not any long amount of time, uh, because I've only picked these up recently in one big purchase. <laughs> so. Passage of time, speaking of which, has been kind to some of these movies and others not so much. But I have a soft spot for all of them, regardless. For the most part. <laughs> the first one we're going to be looking at. Daredevil, Ben Affleck, director's cut. It's just a DVD. But the director's cut is the superior version of a hilarious, a corny and campy and cheesy 2000s superhero movie. This is a movie that set the character of Daredevil back in the public eye. It was not very well received. It's fun to look back and laugh at it a little. Just have some fun with it. But, at the end of the day, what can you say? cheesy 2000 superhero movie and it reeks of 2000s too there's a lot of new metal and like 2000s hard rock in the movie and uh, it has like so many cliche like superhero scenes and yeah it's a lovable mess but this uh director's cut version has a sleeve on it Yeah, here we go in the back. And ben Affleck is Daredevil. I do not actually remember the actor's name. He plays Electra. Let's see if it's on here. But I can see. Um, there we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's Jennifer Garner, his lecture. And Colin Farrell, his bullseye. And, of course, the man, Wilson Fisk, uh, Kingpin, played by Michael Clark Duncan. <clears throat> Michael Clark Duncan. And funnily enough, this movie also stars John Favreau as Foggy Nelson, Franklin Foggy Nelson, Matt Murdock, Daredevil's best friend, his partner in law. And 
are just funny. This whole Marvel movie is just disconnected from the MCU and then he directs Iron Man 1. And then he's just in it as happy. But yeah, he's also in this. As Foggy. And equally beloved. An equally lovable character. But that's Daredevil. Next up, the extended cut on Blu-ray of Nicolas Cage's Ghost Rider. And this is similar to Daredevil, it's just cheesy, campy, 2000 superheroes movie, superhero movie. And, uh, yeah, I actually have not seen this movie in a long time, but I remember it giving me the same vibes that Daredevil has, and I watched that recently. Somewhat recently, at least. Not since I've gotten the Blu-ray, or, or the, sorry, the, uh, DVD, but like a couple years ago. Meanwhile, I have not seen... Ghost Rider since like 2010. Next up, this is a movie I haven't seen in a little bit too. I'm gonna have to watch it sometime soon because I remember it actually being good, and people do remember it as being good. And there's a new version of him coming out. It's Blade. Uh, Wesley Snipes as Blade, the Vampire Hunter against an army of immortals one warrior must draw first blood Wesley Snipes stars as the tortured soul blade half man half immortal blade sharpens his lethal skills under the guidance of Whistler played by Chris Christopherson is his mentor, guardian, and fellow hunter of the night. When the bloodthirsty immortals Lord Deacon Frost declares war on the human race, Blade is humanity's last hope for survival. Yeah. I also am going to have to watch this at some point soon. I love Wesley Snipes, obviously. Who doesn't? Look at this. How long is this movie? Is it any running time? Two hours. And look how many chapters there are. Look at this. There's 38 chapters in the chapter search index and scene selection. I mean, I gotta respect it. Look how thorough they were. Now I can go right to where I want to when I like to watch half of a movie. And 
Now for the meat of the matter. Spider-Man 1. And this is really the movie. The cave the superhero movies. The kick in the ass. To really get into the mainstream. I mean, X-Men was important. But this was next level. For what it did. Of course, the superhero movies. It was directed by Sam Raimi, Tobey Maguire is Peter Parker, Willem Dafoe is the Green Goblin. <clears throat> and Kirsten Dunst as Mary Jane, James Franco as Harry Osborn. J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson. Spider-Man 2 of the game. And look at this. I can play it with the PlayStation Move. That's pretty neat. Look at the man himself. It's you who it's, who's out, Gobby. Out of your mind. <laughs> This is probably the movie I've seen the most in my life. Uh, it's a far from perfect movie. It hasn't aged the best. And it's just outclassed by Spider-Man 2, but it's probably my favorite comic book movie. I just love everything about it. It, it, it gives me infinite Rewatch value. I just love it so much. Spider Man 1. And as follows Spider Man 2. And as far as live action Spider Man movies go, this is the best one. I don't know if there's much debate on that. Besides Spider-Man 1, maybe, but... Yeah, you know, I said that's my favorite comic book movie, but even I can't argue against Spider-Man 2. But a movie that can, in fact, argue against Spider-Man 2 is Into the Spider-Verse, which is... The difference between Spider-Man 2 and 1 is the difference between Spider-Verse and this movie. Spider-Verse is just the best Spider-Man movie. It's one of the best animated movies I've ever seen. It's probably my all-time favorite, too. There you go. Favorite comic book movie. Favorite animated movie. Both belong to Spider-Man, my favorite fictional character. Of course, Alfred Molina is Otto Octavius, Dr. Octopus. Or as Jameson wanted to call him, Doctor Strange. But the name's taken. There is Doctor Strange himself. Looks like he's fighting Smith. There he is there. He's fighting Spider-Man. And it looks like that's the scene. And they're on the clock tower. Or... You can't really tell. Like when Dr. Octopus takes Aunt May and brings her up.
commentary with Sam Raimi, Toby McGuire, Avi Arad, and co-producer Grant Curtis. That would be interesting to watch. I might have to watch it with the commentary. That's what's so great about these physical releases for movies you really like is they you get exclusive content that's they sometimes it can be really hard to find outside of you know the physical copies and um, in this movie it's now on Disney Plus but at the time I got this it wasn't on any streaming service at all that I could find in Canada and they're all at my local shop so Let's see this one. I'll always have the assurances that I can watch these movies because they're a great comfort viewing for me have it feeling down there hung over on a Sunday uh, or whatever it may be I always have the Raimi trilogy including Spider-Man 3. This is... Going in the Daredevil tier of lovable messes. It is, in my opinion, it's substantially better than Daredevil and... Hurt my recollection, Ghost Rider. But, uh... This is definitely the worst of... The Raimi Trilogy. But. <clears throat> it is. No less entertaining. I mean. Yeah. It's villain overload. But it's just an insane movie. Like things are always happening. And it still retains. A lot of the charm. It's still definitely a Sam Raimi Spider-Man sequel. And this is the one out of those other two. So out of the Sam Raimi trilogy, this is the one that I had seen in theaters when it came out. And I remember loving it, of course. <laughs> I think I was seven or eight when it came out. So how could I not love Spider-Man 3? And, and with Venom. And, and, and Sandman. Oh, and Harry is... Harry's... Harry's the Green Goblin. Holy crap. Say what you want about the movie. It definitely did not fail on the spectacle side of things. That's for sure. And that's really what saves the movie. Is the spectacle and the charm. In any event... I would say the Raimi trilogy goes Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man 1, to Spider-Man 3. Shocking. A very unique opinion. But that's all I really have to say in conclusion here. <clears throat> that's the Raimi trilogy. Blade, Nicolas Cage's Ghost Rider, and Ben Affleck's Daredevil. Thank you guys for watching.